Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. This week, we're back in Algoma country and our quarry is brook trout. It's early in the season, so we'll also bonus out on a few lake trout. We'll talk about the techniques, the equipment, everything you need to know to be successful. Stay with us, we'll be right back. That is amazing. There's a take. Oh, nice. The power, all right. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, Our destination this week is Algoma Country and Ritchie Falls Resort. Located just over 50 miles from the Trans-Canada Highway and north of a small town of Massey, Ontario. This drive to destination is one of Algoma's hidden jewels for trophy brook trout, smallmouth bass and lake trout. Ritchie Falls Resort has been in operation for many years and is known for its pristine lakes and rivers. The resort offers a variety of accommodation choices that will suit any group size for both housekeeping and meal plans. The cabins feature beautiful interior pine, leather furniture, spacious rooms and large windows. All cabins are equipped with dishes, linens, modern indoor plumbing, and satellite TV. An ideal setup for all types of anglers and budgets. This, along with incredible fishing and outstanding customer service, makes Ritchie Falls one of the premier destinations in the region. Joining me on this trip is fellow host and avid trout angler, Colin McEwen. Our expert angler for this week is resort head guide, Jimmy Mitchell. Jimmy's been coming to this region for many years and is very knowledgeable about the best locations for finding trout. The first day was overcast and rainy, perfect for lake trout. It's late May and the lake trout are still in shallow water and reachable with a fly. Average lake trout in the system are two to four pounds in size and occasionally an angler will land a fish to 15 pounds. Our strategy that our guide Jim has been using is a drift. We're going up to a point and drifting down the shoreline and fishing all the drop-offs, sunken humps, anything where there's a change in depth. The fish are hanging there and, and feeding. They're coming in shallow and then heading back deep again. So we got a point up here we started at and we're drifting down the shoreline and hitting all those areas where we feel that the fish are going to be. They're suspended at about 5 to 12 feet right now and uh, this is the only time of year where they're in that shallow and uh, this being the end of May. Got him. Okay, this guy hit right at the boat bill. Did he? Yep. Yeah, and decent. There you go, you got him. Got him, good got going, Colin. <laughs> Followed right up and then he took a swipe at it and missed it. And then he came up and took it again. There he goes. One of the best things to do with lake trout, very much like salt water, you give him a little torpedo. I know we all like to take a trout and put it down there and let it swim off and revive. These guys, a shot of oxygen across the uh, gills really gives them a shot. And you've seen that a lot, right? So, let's go and get another one. That was really cool.
we use on this trip are full sink lines. The lake trout are suspended 8, 10, 12 feet down. So we're using type five and type six full sinking lines and we're counting down, usually counting down 20 seconds or so before you start your retrieve. Uh, then you know you're in the zone. Uh, we've had a few follow-ups. Uh, they're active. Um, the reason they're, they're here in the shallows at this time of year is they've spent a full winter under the ice and more or less fasting. So they come in as the sp uh, suckers start to spawn uh, and, and, and feed up as much as they can before the, the, the water becomes warm again. So, full sinking lines, fairly heavy flies. We're counting them down 20 seconds or better and retrieving. So, the fly I've switched over to because we've had both Bill and I so many short takes with these lake trout. There's a tube fly with the hook, this very small hook in the back of the tube. And I'm just gonna pull that tight in there. And then it's in the tail. So a lot of the fish are grabbing the tails and that's why we're missing them. They're just pecking at it. And so I switched to this tube fly and it seems to be working. I've hooked two fish so far. I did lose the one, but that was my fault. I put slack in the line. Uh, but we're getting follows, and what's real exciting, these fish are really shallow, and uh, they're not as aggressive as normal. Not as aggressive as normal, but I know they're gonna turn on and we're gonna get some big ones. I'm gonna bring them right to you there. Awesome, Colin, awesome. He followed for a while, didn't he? He did. There we go. Oh, got him. All Excellent. Right. Good job. The clouds and the fog of the day had lifted and the sun was out and it was warming up. Bad luck for us because this shuts Lake Trout down. So we decided to head back, enjoy a great meal and prepare for the next day's adventure of brook trout in one of the local lakes. Today our guide Jimmy has taken us to one of the numerous small lakes the region is famous for. We used ATVs to bring some of the gear into a boat and we simply walked into the launch location. This was literally just a few minutes from the road. Though there's usually excellent river and stream fishing for brook trout, unfortunately it was a late spring and the water levels were high and the temperatures were low. Lake fishing was the best option for readily finding trout. It's early morning, it's cool. We're into one of the numbered lakes that are here at Ritchie's and we're really excited. It's a brook trout lake and we're at the outlet. Now what's happening is the suckers have come in to spawn and we got brook trout that have followed them in to eat the eggs. This is really exciting. So we're looking forward to a good day of fishing. We're smacking the water right on top of them. Fish on. Oh, well done, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, we just got here. We just got here. Uh, Richie's has got it all, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is exciting. On a black woolly bugger, and it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it, like a peacock curl colored. I just placed it over to where I thought the, f the fish were. A couple of strips back, and he grabbed it. Bill, I'm just setting up my rod. Give me a chance. <laughs> it's 
Isn't that something? We haven't even gone out in the main lake yet. No. <laughs> well, that's a nice uh, pound. Two pounder. Couple, yeah, pound couple and a half, pounds. two pounder, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, it's fighting great. On this five weight, it's wonderful. There we go. There we go. Oh, wow. Outstanding. Bring them over here. Now I'm I'm not I'm not gonna fool myself and think that that's gonna be the way it's gonna be all day, but dynamite. Now this is the woolly bugger that I I was using. It's peacock hurl type of uh, crystal flash. It's got a bead head on it or a, a cone head, sinks down, and I'm just using a floating line. Uh, I didn't have to go down very far. This this will sink pretty quick, so that's all I've been using. Looks like a leech, I I would imagine, and then the fish are on leeches. I got a fish. Got a fish right there. So, this Whoa, is. Oh, it's taking some line out. This is crazy, Bill. <laughs> and we haven't even got out in the boat yet. We're just fishing this gravel flat where we're about to launch the boat. And there's so many of these lakes around here, not to mention the rivers. It's a fly fisher's heaven. Boy, that's a nice fish to call it. Yeah, I didn't think that's it was a that really big. nice fish. Okay. Right over yeah. top. Oh, there you go. Oh. Well, we're seeing much bigger fish. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the spots on it. That's great. That's great. He wasn't even trying. They're there. They're they're waiting on the edge here. We have some uh, suckers that are spawning in the shallows here, and these fish are waiting on the edge to come in and grab what whatever they can, eggs, whatever they can. And Colin just put it into a bunch of them, right? We can see them coming I can see back. Some in. out here, yeah. Coming but back I, I just literally flicked it out to make the yeah. cast. Yeah. There's hundreds of fish in this little area. Now, I have trees behind me here, so I'm going to use a back cast presentation. So that's just kick it out like that, because I have trees here. I I can't back cast properly, so this is the way you do it. Let it sink. He says, it, uh, our guide says it drops to about 40 feet and then just start slowly bringing it back. Fish on. Get him on there. Just an all of a sudden stop. That's all you feel. And then lots of head shakes. Don't know how big this one is. We'll see in a, in a second when I get him up to the top. Bill, can you bring that in yourself? Yeah, you I got wanna... it. Yep, no problem. See this? I will catch these all day. Beautiful, beautiful brook trout. The lodge itself runs 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. We have a variety of opportunities such as uh, fishing for lakers in the lakes and a huge following for our river system up here. It's endorsed by locals on a regional level, but uh, there are a lot of opportunities to fish the lakes and rivers up here, primarily lakers and uh, our brook trout. fish on. There we go. Another fish. It's a, we, we, we refer to them at the new fly fisher as bugle trout. <laughs> it's a sucker. <laughs> but a sucker that hit a woolly bugger. <laughs> and away he goes. That was unexpected. I didn't think that they would hit Woolly buggers. I thought they'd, if you put anything down there from the, like bait down there, they'd eat, eat that, but I didn't think they'd hit a woolly bugger. But most any fish hits a woolly bugger, so. Watch, he's coming to it. Got him. That's amazing. <laughs> That's it's just amazing. <laughs> Right in. 
It's not a super big fish, but look at the colors for this time of the year. Wow, nice male. Now I'm using a five weight rod. Look at that fish. Look at that fish. And we've got four or five pounders in here like this. The fishing had slowed down, so we decided to head out in a boat and try casting the shoreline. I just had a dry fly on and not much was happening. We're waiting on a hatch. It's still a little early in the season. We just had some hopeful wishes for a dry fly hatch, but it didn't happen. So this is actually what's, what's been working for us is, uh, is woolly bugs is of, of any type. Um, I've got some that are peacock row colors. I got some plain black ones. I got bigger ones all different sizes, experiment to find what the fish prefer. Uh, sometimes they don't want big, they want small, and other times they want big. It, it, it just depends on the mood. I have some white ones. Um, some days that, that works really well. Today, not so much. Today was peacock hurled woolly bugger. I've got some olive ones, and I got even some bright orange ones. And Colin has had particularly good luck today with these crayfish colored buggers. Uh, they got rubber legs on them, a little, little bit of flash, but you work them the same as you would a crayfish. Strip, 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 stop. Strip, 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 stop. Purple can be the, one of the best colors for trout that I've found over my 40 years of experience. Nice there shot. you go. Good job, Bill. Let me back out a bit yep. here. Yeah, there was one over there that I was I was aiming at. I didn't even actually see this one. He was out of nowhere. There, there we go. go. Oh, sweet. That's a nice fish. Well done. All right, this should come out easy. This is where floating nets so handy. Yep. I just put it. In here, oh. you just pop right out. <laughs> Today, uh, Bill and I have used a couple of different fly lines that are perfect for the lake. I know a lot of people think automatically, oh, you got to have full sinking lines and sink tips, and a lot of times you do. But because where the trout were, actually, we used a combination of different types of uh, fly lines. Bill, uh, pretty much throughout the day, has been using a floating line, which has been perfect, and. What's really cool, this is an indicator line. It's got a little mark on it, so he can actually see when he's pulling that fly back. Sometimes it'll actually move, and he can realize he's had a strike in case he's got any slack. So that's a great line. And he's using a weight forward five on this uh, rod and reel. And I've been using intermediate, which has got the fly down a little bit deeper. Uh, an intermediate fly line, this is a clear one, one and a half to two inches per second. It's perfect for getting woolly buggers down. I've been fishing the deeper edges as opposed to where Bill's going up on top of the shelf, fishing one foot to about four. I'm doing more of the four to six, sometimes eight feet with the intermediate line, which is perfect. You can fish on. All right. Watch Tim come out from that log, that same log. Nice fish. Well done, Bill. Yeah. And I got him. Oh no, uh, I got him. Good man. Oh. <laughs> I just about had a heart attack. <laughs> Whew. 
for a short window, the brook trout in the shallows were willing to take topwater flies. The action was insane. Fantastic day, and I'm taking my rod apart. Really, just put that last good fly that just <laughs> cut that trout into the tree. So it's definitely time to go. We're tired. It's the end of the day, but we really don't want to leave because it's been an epic day. Not just a good day, but an epic day. Uh, we got some 4K slow motion takes of trout taking big flies on the surface. It's it's incredible. So we're really excited about this. Yeah, and then of course we've got some even on the woolly buggers that were in the shadows. Yeah, they were in there for the sucker spawn. They're coming up and being our woolly buggers. You just for yeah. wild trout. I mean, you just don't yeah. get this. Yeah, these are wild trout. These are not stock. These are wild trout. This is fantastic. Thanks, Bill. Well, this is that sad part of any trip, the end. And it's been a fantastic trip. We highly recommend you come up to Ritchie's Falls Resort for your next vacation. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks.